Oh hi everyone, welcome back to the Four Bells Fitness Emporium. We have been closed here now for one week, one week of shutdown. How are you doing? Are you alright? Are you having issues with slightly going insane indoors? Are you looking at your significant other, wondering if they'll stop doing that thing where they crack their knuckles all the time? Well, I'm sure things get strained when we're all at home together, guys. But the good news is, the fitness train does not stop. If you can, try and get outside, do some fitness, go for a walk, take your dog for a walk, steal someone else's dog, not that I would recommend that, and then take that dog for a walk also. Do whatever you need to stay sane, and just try and spend a little bit of time outside with, of course, social distancing thoughts in the forefront of your mind at all times. So let's talk about what we're up to today, guys. We are on workout number four that we are doing remotely for you guys, and it's a glorious day. If you were in the gym right now, this would be a testing day for you. So if you were a member of the gym, or are a member of the gym, then you have to remember that at the end, this would be the end of our six week block where we've been looking at planking strength. So our warm up today is very straightforward. Here's a test. It's quite straightforward, it says it right there, the words are there, it says test, it's quite clear. And it says, max plank hold time. How long can you hold your plank for? And hopefully we've seen a measured improvement over the last six weeks. For some of you guys, I'm hoping to see significant improvements. And if you're a member of the gym, we're gonna be sending out all of the plank times again as we recorded them all six weeks ago. So you've got, got, um, got an idea of what number you should be beating when you test today. We saw some very impressive plank times last time. We saw one of our members get as long as a nine minute plank, extremely impressive, but it doesn't really matter how long you were planking for, we're just trying to see some measured improvement. As I always say to everyone in the gym, the only currency that matters to me is effort, and can we see if we can continually improve as many aspects of our fitness as possible. So, this first warm up is a one and done situation. I'm gonna get into that plank position, so we're gonna talk about this very quickly, I'll get into it. Plank position is fairly straightforward, guys. As we mentioned before, we're going to test with our plank on our hands today. We like the plank on the hands here at the four bells versus the plank on the elbow. Not because one is better than the other, but we feel it's a little bit more transferable to the rest of our fitness endeavors that we're doing. So, as always, hands directly below the shoulders. I am going to grip the fingers onto the floor. I'm going to externally rotate so the pit of my elbow points forwards, point of my elbow points straight back. And when I set up into that plank, it's of course trying to make sure that I don't shift the weight backwards, ending up in the Superman plank, we don't want this. We want to make sure the shoulders are directly above the hands, and then just trying to find a nice position that we are comfortable with. Is that for me, it's feet together, so I can squeeze the legs, squeeze the glutes, brace the abdominals, and pull the pelvis into a posterior pelvic tilt, get everything nice and strong, or for you, is it with the feet a little bit wider? Again, it's trying to find out what position works best for you. The last thing to remember with our plank hold is one simple thing. The plank is not just a physical endeavor, it is a psychological endeavor. So set yourself up for success. I remember when we tested this six weeks ago, one of our members found it very easy to do when they had a song on that they enjoyed. So if you find that distraction with a song helps, if you find that distraction with your kids singing in the background helps, or if you just want to watch a video on YouTube, whatever it is, set yourself up for success and post your times, let us know how you did in your plank and if you saw any improvement. So, plank test is done. Now we're going to get into some strength work today. Strength work is quite straightforward. We're going to do five sets. Each set, three minutes long. Within that three minute window, we have some options today, whether we're in the gym with equipment or whether we're at home without equipment. So if you're in the gym with equipment, you will be trying to do chin-ups or negatives, depending on where you are with your chin-up endeavors today. We'll be doing that for five reps. As soon as I've done my chin-ups or negatives, we're gonna come into a seated dumbbell press today for 10 reps. We're gonna go over how to do these in a minute. The way from the home, we spoke about this a few workouts ago, the door row, using something creative so you can get some kind of pulling going on, which is notoriously hard to do at home if you don't have straps or a TRX or a chin-up bar. So we're gonna talk about how to do the door row again and then some kind of push-up for 10 reps. So try to make sure that push-up variation is wherever it needs to be in terms of your scaling option. Do you need to have your hands on the stairs, hands on the barbell? Do we look in towards moving towards one-arm push-ups? So again, finding the variation that works best for you. That's gonna be our strength piece today. When we come into our conditioning piece, conditioning piece is straightforward today. It's 15 minutes, 900 seconds of joy, but we are gonna treat this as an AMRAP. We are gonna cycle through these four movements as many times as possible in 15 minutes. 
I've got two options for each of the rep based pieces. So we've got, first of all, we've got dumbbell push presses for 10 reps. If I don't have dumbbells, we're going to talk about the Hindu push up, or sometimes it's known as the dive bomb push up for 10 reps. I'm then going to come into either 15 calories or 150 meters. 15 calories or 150 meters of what, I hear you ask, but it really depends on what you have available. So do I have a bike available at home where I can record calories? Do I have to run 150 meters down the street or around my back garden? What works best for you? From there, it's dumbbell plank rows. We're gonna go over how to do those before we start as well. We're gonna do 10 reps per side. But if you don't have dumbbells, I'm just gonna do a body weight plank row, which again, as we know, it's not gonna have dumbbells attached to it. So it's really about trying to be as intentional as possible when we're doing those rows. Last but not least, we do just as we did for the second movement, 15 calories or 150 meters of something. And that's gonna be our conditioning piece today. We take these four stations and we cycle through as many times in 15 minutes. All right, strength piece for workout number four. So pretty straightforward, we have five sets. Each set is three minutes long. In that three minute window, you have a pairing of exercises to do, a superset, depending on whether you're in the gym with gym equipment, maybe you have a home gym, or whether you have zero equipment and you're just trying to work it out at home. So, if you are in a gym with a gym setting, we are gonna do two things. It will be a chin up, using a chin up bar, obviously, and it will be some seated dumbbell pressing. So with the chin up, Pretty straightforward. What's the difference between a chin up and a pull up? And the answer is hand position, kids. With a chin up, we are in a supinated position, so palms facing up. Here at the four bells, no one likes a Johnny half rep, so we're gonna make sure that every single rep starts with a completely straight arm. We pull ourselves all the way up so our chin fully clears the bar, and then we come back down to a fully straightened bar. So in terms of movement standards, yes, chin squeaking over the bar is nice. Throat to the bar is wonderful clavicles to the bar is bellissimo if we can make that happen. So when it comes to a chin up, hands should be just outside of shoulder width. We're going to start with a complete dead hand. I pull myself up, pause for a second, and then it's nice and controlled on the way down. If chin ups are not an option for you and you need to work on negatives, the negative basically means focusing on the eccentric or the lowering phase of the chin up. Put yourself in a position where you can jump up easily, we're gonna have our hands in the same position, just outside the shoulder width. I drive the elbow back, I wanna squeeze the forearm, squeeze the bicep, trying as much tension through the upper back as I can. I jump up, I pause for a second, and then it should be somewhere around three to five seconds on the way down. That's what we're looking for with our negative. From our chin-ups on negatives, we then come into the seated dumbbell press. So with the seated dumbbell press, you can see here from the bench, the bench is slightly Decline, incline, however you want to look at it, slightly leaning back, which means it kind of help us, helps us if our overhead mobility is not the best. So I'm going to sit on the bench, feet firmly planted. In terms of the dumbbell position, you can have the dumbbells neutral. I'll find that if the arms flare out and we become more pronated, we're going to use less of the pec to help us press. Personally, I like to use the pec when I press. I feel like it protects the shoulder a little bit more. So we're going to pull those elbows in abs nice and tight, rib cage down, I press overhead and control back down to the shoulder. So we're gonna do five chin-ups or five negatives, 10 seated dumbbell press. If you are not at the gym, what can you do? Well, we spoke about this a few workouts ago, which was the door row. We're well, trying to find something to do doors with. Sorry, do, do doors with, do rows with. Of course, if you can fashion a chin-up bar, whether that means it's a branch in a tree, whether that means you are, I don't know, hanging off your deck, of course be safe. It's trying to find some way to do upper body pulling, which is notoriously hard when you don't have any equipment. So you can take a strap like this, it's from the back of my truck. We put a very crude, simple knot in it. And all we're gonna do is just hang that knot over the back of the door, let it hang over. We close the door, pull the strap down till the slack is out of it. From there, I'm going to create myself a pair of handles. If you want to, you can maybe wrap the straps around the hand. And all I'm going to do is set up in that nice plank position, bum tight, abs tight, focusing on the elbow drive back as I do my rows. Simple door row. Last but not least, push-ups. 
So when it comes to a push-up, we have standards here at the Four Bells. More than importantly than standards is about training longevity. Can I continue to train the same way I train now when I'm 80, 90 years old? So when it comes to a push-up position, ideally we want to be thinking structurally about taking care of those shoulders. So I want to have the hands straight down from the shoulders. I want to be gripping the floor, I want to externally rotate so the pit of my elbow points forwards with the intention being that as I pull myself down to the ground, the elbows are going to graze the rib cage. So I set the hands up, plank position, control down to the floor, no it should be just above the floor, and from there we push back up. So nice and controlled throughout. If that's easy for you, then what are the options? Maybe it's diamond push-ups. Maybe it's some kind of one-arm variation. If you're not sure what to do, ask us for uh, some suggestions, we will happily help you. Alright, workout number four, conditioning piece. So 15 minute AMRAP, 900 seconds of pure joy, where we're going to look at dumbbell push presses for 10 reps. If you don't have dumbbells, we're going to talk about Hindu push-ups for 10 reps. It's then going to be either 15 calories or 150 meters of whatever you have available. Bike, your legs, row, I don't know, strap some cats together and chase them. I don't know why I'm focused on cats, but this must be a big thing. So, either way, whatever it is, then we're into dumbbell plank rows. Again, if you have dumbbells, we're going to do 10 per side, 20 total. If you don't have dumbbells available, it's going to be body weight plank rows for 10 reps. And then again, 15 counts, 150 meters, whatever you have available. So, we're going to talk about those movements very quickly. When it comes to dumbbell push pressing, pretty straightforward. Just like we did when we are doing seated press, I always like to try to avoid, when I'm doing anything dynamic, having the elbows flare. As soon as the elbows flare, it puts a bit more stress on the shoulder because I don't have as many structures around the shoulder protecting it. So I keep the elbows pointing forwards, nice and neutral with the hands. I'm going to do a leg drive to drive those dumbbells off the shoulder. So I dip, drive overhead, control back down to the shoulder. Dip, drive overhead, control back down to the shoulder. That's going to be our dumbbell push press. Fairly simple. When it comes to the Hindu push up, a bit more complex. So I'm going to try and keep this as abridged as possible for you guys. The Hindu push up, I probably say, or some, some people know it as the diet bomber push up, is my favorite push up variation. It covers not only strength, regular push up, fantastic as a strength builder, but the Hindu push up covers a little bit from a lot of different angles. We start in almost a handstand position, transition through the push-up position, and almost finish at the top of a dip. So a lot more range of motion in terms of strength development, and it also covers a huge mobility piece. So let's go over how it looks. So in the Hindu push-up, we have four scaling options here at the Four Bells. The first one starts with the bum to the heels, almost in what is known as child's pose position. So I start by keeping my nose and face pretty high off the ground. I don't want to let my elbows flare out. I'm trying to keep the elbows pointing towards the knees. I pull myself forward, transition over the hands, bring the hips to the floor. I'm going to dig my toes in, hips to the ceiling. Knees down, bum back, and off we go again. Pull myself forwards, hips down, toes in, hips to the ceiling. Option number two, very similar. The only difference we're going to do is bring the forearms down. Nose is now as close to the, to the floor as possible. I pull myself forwards, smooth transition over the hands, push up, toes in, hips to the ceiling, knees down, butt back, and off we go again. Option number three, all we're going to do, if you can notice, is notice there is a gap between the knees and the floor. I pull myself forwards, push up, hips to the ceiling. As the knees come down, the thumb goes back, and there's still that gap there. I pull forwards, push up. Last but not least, the full enchilada, the full Hindu push-up. I start in that downward facing dog position, keeping the elbows pointing to the toes. I pull myself down, push up, hips back up to the ceiling. Pull myself down, push up, hips back up to the ceiling. So that's our four levels, <coughs> excuse me, of our Hindu push-up. Plank rows. So with the plank row, what we're looking to do is be in a plank position. So that means dumbbells should be shoulder width, neutral grip. When it comes to the plank row, I'm trying to avoid rotation. So as I move the arm, the hips are going to want to wiggle. So I've got to keep the hips tight, nice wide base of support. 
I try and deal with that smooth placement with the dumbbells. That's what we're looking for with that plank row. If we don't have dumbbells, same rules apply. Plank position, I drive the elbow, squeeze the upper back as hard as I can, and down, squeeze the upper back as hard as I can. We're doing 10 per side, 20 total, and that's a conditioning piece.